In this video, we'll be defining vectors algebraically. All right, so in definition 1.1.2, a vector v in Rn is an ordered list of n real numbers. v is v1, v2, vn. All right, so V1, V2, Vn are real numbers. Um, they're called the components or coordinates of the vector V, and N is called the dimension. So notice that that N in Rn tells you that you should use N real numbers. So the Rn, the N is the dimension. All right, so to keep points and vectors separately, because they look a bit the same, uh, we'll be using round brackets for points, and we'll be using angle brackets if we want to write a vector in a horizontal line. Uh, we could also write the list vertically, and then we'll be using square brackets. All right, so let's practice sketching vectors. Um, in example 1.1.3, we're asked to sketch the following points or vectors in R2 and R3. So let's start in R2, that's easiest. So I want U to be 4, 3. Remember that's delta X, delta Y. And so delta X of 4, that means I'm gonna move to 4, delta Y of 3, I'm going to move up three. So I have this box. Uh, let me draw it in purple. I'm going to start at the origin. I want to make this change in X. And then I also want to make this change in Y. So my my vector looks like this. And that's the vector U. All right, for minus 5, 3, the delta x is minus 5, and so that's about here. And the y is 3, that's over here. So here's my little box. Again, I want to, if I start at the origin, I want to go to minus 5, and then up 3, that's v. All right, so the minus told you to go left instead of going right, but that's the only real difference between A and B. All right, so in 3D, drawing vectors and drawing points is more of a challenge, so let's practice slowly. Um, here in the first case, because I have round brackets, we were just told that meant it was a point, so we're looking for this point P. While in D, because I have square brackets, that's going to be a vector. So let's start with a point. Um, the point has x equal to 3, y equal to 2, and z equal to 4. So I'm going to place those um, on my axes. Now let's look at those axes a bit. I want you to think of y and z as laying flat on the piece of paper. And then X here is sticking out at you. Right, so we're drawing it at an angle to really try to picture that it's coming out of the page. We want 3 in the X, so 3 is that way. Positive is towards you, negative is away from you. Um, 2 in the Y, so that's over here. And 4 in the Z, that's up here. So we want a point that has all three of this, these coordinates. Let's start with something a bit less ambitious. Um, let me do two of these coordinates. So if I want y to be 2, so I need to be somewhere on that yellow line. And I want, uh, let's do pink. I want z to be 4. So I want something like this. 
All right, so this is the same box I drew in blue in A and B. I'm using two different colors, and you'll see why in a second. I'm going to use uh, yellow for everything that's moving in the Z direction, and I'm going to use per, uh, pink for everything in the Y direction. So if I look at this point here, that's not our P point, but it does have the right Y and the right Z component because I've moved two in the Y and four in the Z to go to it, but I haven't moved in the X at all. All right, let's try to do something like this for a point that has the right X and the right Y, but not necessarily the right Z. So I'm going to draw something that you should see as coming out of the page, so three, and I'm going to draw exactly the same segment but over here and then to complete my little square that looks like a parallelogram because we're trying to see it in 3d so that point here at the end that point has y equals to 2 because we move two in the Y. It has X equals to three because we move towards ourselves um, three units, but it didn't move in the Z at all, so we have zero. So that's kind of the bottom of our box. And now let's do the same thing for X and Z. Um, if I start at the origin, I can move around the red and then I can move up. Let's go like, oh, this is crooked. Let's move up. And then from, if I started doing it, I can move up first and then move like this. Perfect. So that point at the end here has the right X and the right Z, but doesn't have any Y. We haven't moved in the Y, so we're still at zero. All right, so we have three points here. None of them are P, but they both share two coordinates with P. To get P, I need to complete the box. I have the back wall of the box, I have the side wall, and I have the bottom. I need the top and the two other sides. Um, to draw it, what I like to do is I like to start at that orange dot and draw the final um, yellow edge. And then you just linked it back to these. Oh, it was pink, right? Yeah, pink. So that final vertex here, that's P. Now, if you draw the box, you can see P is coming out. It's, and that's why we draw the box. Otherwise, if I erase the box, don't do this. Oh, sorry, I changed. So if I erase the box, all you have is a point randomly placed and you don't really know if it's sticking out if it's flat on the paper so when you draw in 3d it's important to draw that box all right so i'm gonna draw the same picture but quicker because it's the second time and this time it's going to be a vector so we're thinking of changes in x y and z instead of just values so the change in x is minus 3, change in y is 5, change in z is 4. So I'm going to place those on the axis. Like I said, positive x is towards you, negative x is inside the paper. y is 5 and z is still 4. Now what I do if I want to draw this quickly, I'll draw the bottom of the box first. So here's my... This is crooked. Here is the two sides moving in X. Here are the two sides of my parallelogram moving in Y. All right, so do you draw this parallelogram? Make sure that the two opposite sides of the parallelogram are really parallel and have the same length. And then at each of the vertex, I'm going to draw a yellow. edge sticking up and then on top what I should have is exactly a 
moved up copy of what the bottom did. So something like this, and then the pink here. All right, so I like to draw the bottom first, and then the going up sides, and finally the top. All right, so this point here, if I had to give it a name, um, would be Q, and then it has X coordinate minus three, uh, Y comp comp coordinate five, and Z coordinate four. And if I want to draw my vector minus three, five, four, I could start at zero and go to it. So here is W. Again, we chose to start at zero because it's easier. We don't need to. We're told that we can move the vector wherever we want. So we could start right over here, but that would just make it even more difficult.